Week 9. Two teams. Both 8 no. Both undefeated. This match is written in destiny. A king versus a god. I don't know if you guys are ready. Friends, you got Gypsy back here today, bringing you week 9 of the MPL. And guys, it's time. It's the Clash of the Undefeateds. The Sydney Sharpedos versus the St. Louis Rashi Rams. Guys, this match has been a long time coming. Uh -huh. From day 1, ever since the preseason power rankings came out, Maddie and I have both been up there in the rankings. We juked it out for the 1 and 2 spot over the course of the season, and we arrived here, both undefeated, both 8-0. Uh, last week, with our respective wins, we actually broke the record of longest win streak in uh, NPL history, uh, which I think is pretty amazing, you know, not only for myself to achieve that, which is great for, you know, that makes me happy, um, but for a really close friend of mine to achieve that alongside me is just, uh, you know, that's very exciting for me, that makes me very happy, and it's it's just, it's awesome to see. Um, but this week we are actually facing each other, and guys, this is a challenge if I've ever had one on my hands, because Maddie is arguably... Uh, one of the best players in draft format. He is just an absolute god when it comes to mods in general. Uh, but the draft format is... It's just... He's just made this place his home. Um, he's a tournament player. For those of you who aren't aware, like I shouldn't have to tell you guys this, but if for some reason you aren't aware of who Matty Brolic is or what he uh, what he does in the in the community, he is he's primarily a Smogon, uh, a very, very competent Smogon player. He's a tournament player. But he's actually started dominating... Uh, ever since last season when he joined the MPL, uh, he made such an impressive showing of his skill uh, to adapt and play in the league format with a very subpar team last season. He made a real run in playoffs and made a run for the championship with a team that he wasn't very uh, comfortable with and he still did fantastically uh, well. And this season, my man has a team that really fits his play style. He's got Mega Guard on his team. He didn't bring it this match, but he has uh, Mega Gardevoir uh, as well as a lot of bulk and a lot of offensive versatility on his team, as well as hazard support. Uh, he, he's just a fantastic drafter and a fantastic player, obviously, because he's undefeated. Uh, he's overcome hacks and poor matchup to get where he is today. So I've got a lot of respect for Matty as a player and as a person on, on a personal level as well. He's a good friend of mine. So uh, I'm very excited to be playing Matty today, to be bringing you guys this match. And I hope you guys enjoy this match because this is, this is uh, arguably the best match I've ever had um, <laughs> in my opinion it, it's just it was so hype like regardless of the outcome of this match you know it was the most fun I've had in a match every turn was calculated on both sides uh, we, we actually took a very long time to make our moves it, it's like a game of chess between two masters um, it just took that long but you know this is what you have to do when you play someone of Maddie's caliber you really have to think out your, your plays and um, you know Every turn is, is that important. So uh, we'll jump into the team that I brought this week. Um, I opted not to bring Mega Pinsa because it matches up very poorly versus Matty's team. He actually made a very clever trade leading up to our game a, a week or so before our game, swapping Slowbo for Rotom Wash, which is a fantastic Mega Pinsa check. It's basically one of the only Mega Pinsa checks by like a, a Fizz Def Skarmory in standard play that you'll see take on uh, Mega Pinsa comfortably. Lander ST is not a Mega Pinsa check. It just SDs on the switch in if he's adamant and kills with the return. So, yeah, Lando T is not a, a pincer check unless it's scuffed. Um, so, as you guys can see, Maddie also has the Registeel and the Don Fan, which kind of renders pincer really, it gives it a really hard time. Whilst it does have a, it has a really good matchup versus his team in general, it uh, it, it's going to really struggle to get past the combination of Rotom, Registeel, and Don Fan. And I did know he'd bring them to this match because you have to prep for Mega Pinsir. If you don't prep for Mega Pinsir, then you're going to have a bad time, essentially. And um, as you guys can see, the roadblocks are in the way. So Mega Pinsir not coming is, is hopefully going to work out for me, but 
in saying that I do lose a lot of offensive power in not bringing you know, the beast that is Mega Pinsir. So I opted to bring Whimsicott over Mega Pinsir uh, this week. I felt as though Whimsicott could potentially put a bit more work in. I wouldn't be so affected by the Stealth Rocks, obviously, because uh, as you guys will see when we go into my team a bit more, I don't want to have to defog my hazards away. I want to I want to force him to rapid spin if he needs to, but uh, I don't want to be put in, in the situation where I have to defog my hazards away. I want to maintain offensive uh, momentum in this game and not have to, you know, be passive and defog my hazards away as I'm forced to in certain matchups and in certain weeks. Um, but yeah, as you can see, he hasn't brought the Mega Gardevoir, which which is fair enough on his part. You know, Maddie's always got a game plan. And I do encourage you guys to go and check out his side of this match and listen to his thought process. I know I will as soon as it goes up because I love hearing his thought process and you know the way he builds and what he thinks of the match and, and all that sort of thing. Um, however, yeah, he hasn't brought the Mega Guard, but he has brought he's, he brought threats. I didn't I didn't think the Taurus would come, but it, it does pose a very big threat to my team, as you guys will see during the match. Uh, and he's brought the Excel Gore, which potentially mean spike stacking uh, which could be an issue um, it could also be just a way to check my weavile because he does outspeed naturally and he's got the inferno as well which could potentially be another weavile check uh, although his team isn't too weak to weavile it, it, it's always nice to have multiple ways to check it because it is such a menace to so many teams so jumping into the team that I've brought we have a mixed defensive whimsicott I can subseed his team effectively wearing it down for my other monster break uh, such as Nidoking and Weavile. Um, but basically here as a switch into the Rotom as well as the Don Fan uh, to an extent. I'm running Encore this week as well as Sub Leech Seed and Moonblast. Encore for things like a setup uh, Infernape. Uh, Encore for things like a Hydro Pumping Rotom just to stop him grabbing momentum with Volt Switch. Um, and then we have my Mew, which is a physically defensive Mew this week, rocking Carmine, Flamethrower, Psychic, and Roost. Uh, Psychic destroys his team, uh, barring stuff like Shiftry and Registeel, which Flamethrower takes care of uh, once I've weakened them to the point that I don't have to risk getting potentially statused by those mods. Uh, Shiftry obviously can't do much to me, even with knockoff, it does like around 50% if he's like Life Orb, Adamant, or something like that. Uh, Mew's really bulky, and Shiftry's not all that strong. But obviously, I'll scout for his set. Uh, if he did bring it, but uh, that's not going to be an issue this game, as you can see, he doesn't have it. Once I get a car mind up, I could potentially threaten uh, his whole team, because if he is like a specially offensive Inferno, once I get a few car minds up, I won't be taking much from a flame, uh, from Fire Blast at all, and obviously he's a Cell Gore, I don't really want to stain on my Mew, I do have uh, a lot of ways to check the Cell Gore, so we'll get into that uh, soon, but Mew's looking like a pretty solid, solid uh, win con versus his team, or even just a potential annoyance to his team. Uh, next up, we have my Alan Mamola, who is an Assault Vest set this week. Capable of checking his uh, especially offensive threats on his team, like Gengar and Mega Gardevoir. I'm running Knock Off, Waterfall, Ice Beam, and... Uh, Knock Off, Waterfall, Ice Beam, and Scald. Uh, and the reason this is important is Knock Off, you know, Obviously helping remove items for his team. Waterfall is pretty nice stab versus stuff like Mega Gardevoir and Infernape. Obviously doing it a little bit to Donphan, not all that much if he's physically defensive. But uh, Alamol is pretty important. I'm also, sorry, I'm rocking Miracote over Scald, not, not Scald. Uh, Miracote is important for things like a Volt Switching Rotom. To let me never kill with a Miracote on a potential switch in. Also nice for stuff like Excelgore and especially offensive Infernape if you wanted to run like Focus Blast or something like that. Uh, next up, we have my offensive Nido King rocking the Sugarberry this week to effectively set up uh, to, to, to be able to two shot Donphan if he wants to spam Earthquake versus me. I can eat an Earthquake. I can two shot him with Earth Power and eat, eat an Earthquake and leave an Ice Shard the next turn. Um, but this guy's main job is to set up Toxic Spikes because Toxic Spikes, as you can see, affect four of the six mons on his team. Uh, quite nicely whittling them down for the rest of my mons to be able to put in the work. Obviously, Earth Power is really nice to threaten the Registeel, which is a big roadblock to Weavile. So, you know, if I can manage to weaken his, like, Registeel and his uh, Donphan, then Weavile can put in a lot of work. Well, obviously, Infernape stands in the way of Weavile putting in the work, but Donf uh, Nidoking is also quite nice for woodening down the Rotom. If the Rotom gets to around 56, 57, our Sludge Wave can actually take him out with a good roll. So, that is definitely something to consider, because Rotom is annoying for stuff like Metagross, and if he's T-Wave, I don't really want my Mew getting T-Waved because it does have the potential to sweep and getting parried could be very costly for me. 
Um, but the co yeah, the combination of Mew and Nidoking, King, as well as my Weavile set, will be able to take on the road pretty comfortably. Next up, we have a pretty interesting Metagross set. I'm rocking uh, max HP, max special defense with the lefties this week. I've got Stealth Rocks because Hazard's a really nice versus his team. I've got Toxic for the Rotom. I've got Earthquake for stuff like the Registeel. And then my last move is actually Gravity. And now Gravity, there's a couple of reasons why I'm running Gravity. Um, gravity allow me to, uh, Gravity allows me to beat a Magnet Rise Registeel 1v1. It allows me to, uh, it allows me to, to, if I've set up Toxic Spikes, I can Gravity and if Rotom tries to switch in on, on the Metagross at a later point in the game while Gravity's still up, he will be poisoned by the Toxic Spikes. Um, and gravity also allows me a last resort in case, uh, say, you know, say Metagross is low and he's at a point where he's, he can potentially go down to another hit. Uh, I can set up gravity. Meta I can let Metagross go to something like the Rotom, and then I can bring in Nidoking, King, and he can effortlessly spam Earth Power, killing everything that wants to switch in, uh, if not um, to hit KOing, uh, because Rotom will obviously be immune to the Earth, uh, won't be immune to the Earth Power under the effect of gravity. So that, that is the point of gravity this week. Uh, could potentially put in work, uh, could potentially not. It means my Metagross won't be walled uh, as such by the Magnet Rise Registeel. As an Air Balloon, Magnet Rise Registeel could be potentially uh, very annoying for my team because once uh, once like it, it Magnet Rises, you know, my Nido King can't effectively take it on. But under gravity, the effects of Magnet Rise and Air Balloon fail. So that is the, that is the, uh, the idea behind this set. Lastly, we have my banded Weavile here to do damage. <laughs> here to do damage, essentially. Uh, like I don't really need to say anything else. You guys know what banded Weavile does. It uh, it punches holes in teams, and it could potentially clean up. Now, looking at Matty's team, it was a very similar defensive core, as I said earlier, to what I thought he'd bring. Um, but I was quite surprised to see the Taurus and the Selgor. I was quite curious as to what he'd lead to. Uh, lead with, I should say. I, I did contemplate this for a long time. I did fear a potential fine of Gambit lead from Selgor, uh, which is why I decided to lead with my Alamomola, as you guys will see. Uh, if he led with his Selgor, he could actually uh, kill my Weavile with Final Gambit, kill my Metagross with Final Gambit, having one more hit point in health than my Metagross, uh, deal huge damage to Mew potentially with a Bug Buzz, and kill my Whimsicott with Final Gambit. So that is not something I wanted to risk turn 1 in case he was like a hazard stacking gambit a Selgor. So I do lead off with my Whimsic uh, with my Alamomola as Maddie leads off with his Rotom. Now we're in a situation where like obviously like clicking clicking Miracote would be a good play in the sense that I could potentially kill a switch in if he decided to vault out this turn. But Maddie Maddie's not dumb. Maddie Maddie's fully aware of the fact that uh, I could potentially be running Miracote. Uh, Maddie understands the way I think, the way I build, uh, to an extent, uh, he has he has some form of insight into how I think, and you know, if I were to stay in on a Rotom <laughs> with my Alamomola, then chances are I could easily tank a Volt Switch. If I was Fizz Def, I'd be switching out anyways. So uh, he makes the good play turn one and Willow Wisps, whilst I actually go for the knockoff, predicting him not to Volt Switch. And if I uh, can knock off and maybe lure him into the sense that I don't have. Miracote because I didn't show it turn one. I could potentially get a kill here with Miracote. So I do just go for the uh, Miracote right here as he hard switches out. Uh, now that was a very good play on his part, just not wanting to risk it because he doesn't need to risk. He can play safe at this point in the match. There's no point risking uh, taking a huge damage or potentially getting a, one of his members knocked out with a Miracote. Uh, so I Miracote here as he switches in his Register Hill. Now, uh, this, is, this is fun. I've knocked off the item on uh, Rotom, which means he's going to be guaranteed to a coated by a Sludge Wave from Nidoking. Uh, the lefties aren't going to play a part, so unless he's speed creeping my Nidoking, which I don't know for sure at this point because that knockoff damage only reveals that he's max HP um, or that he's invested in health. It doesn't reveal anything about his defensive investment or his speed, so for all I know, he could be speed creeping my Nidoking. So I do have to be careful of that. I do have to you know, run some calcs later on and determine his set a bit more accurately. Uh, but I switch in my Nidoking up on the Registeel, he just goes for his Stealth Rocks. And that's a pr pretty nice play in his part, just getting rocks to start whittling down my team. As now I can uh, just set up my Toxic Spikes as the Don Fan comes in. Now, uh, I, I did uh, I did consider his Don Fan being an Assault Vest variant as it does switch into the Nidoking, which is quite interesting as Earth Power could have been a potential play of the, Nido of the Don Fan. However, he probably predicted me to go for the Sludge Wave here, predicting his Rotom to want to come in on my Earth Power. 
uh, and if he was AV Don fan, he could easily tank a Sludge Wave uh, very, very safely. So that was a that was a nice play on Maddie's part, just going to the Don fan there. So I'll just go for the Ice Beam here. Now, that damage reveals that he's actually max HP, max special defense with the Assault Vest. Uh, so he rapid spins here. Uh, this is actually a 2 echo from this point, so I just go for the Toxic Spice here as he now knocks off. Instead of going for the Earthquake, perhaps predicting me to go into my Alamo Mola or just wanting to knock off a Sugar Berry, so Earthquake was a guaranteed kill next turn. However, if he did Earthquake twice, it would have killed me regardless, so uh, I guess he predicted a switch after something like my Alamo, my Whimsicott or my Alamo Mola. And at this point, I'm just going to fire off uh, another Ice Beam. But he chooses to switch out right here and goes out into his Rotom. So we, we did think long and hard. We both, uh, this probably about two minutes of thinking uh, between these players. And I did contemplate going for Sludge Wave because if he lost, uh, if he let Don Fan uh, take an Ice Beam there, then uh, basically Metagross became a huge threat to his team. Uh, as did stuff like my, basically my whole team threatened his a lot more if this Don Fan went down. So I did very, con very much so contemplate clicking Sludge Wave there, which would have easily two hit the Rotom. At that range of health, but uh, you know, I wasn't going to risk it. If I sludge waved on his rapid spin and he got rid of toxic spikes, I would have been forced to sack my Nidor King to an earthquake the next turn in an attempt to get the toxic spikes back up, therefore losing me a lot of offensive momentum. So I did just go for the ice beam there, knowing I do have pretty safe switch ins to the Rotom. So uh, right here, I just go right out into my uh, Whimsicott on a Hydro Pump, which is a safe play on his part, not wanting to risk, uh, you know, me over predicting and you know, staying in. He just goes. He goes for the safe hydro there, which I do agree with. Now, this we're in an interesting point here. Um, if I'm uh, energy ball, I could potentially uh, kill this Rotom. If I'm if I'm an offensive variant, uh, you know, even if I don't kill him, I do put him in range to die from like a pursuit from Weavile or anything of that nature. Uh, I put him in range to die from any hit from my team, um, and then Metagross becomes a huge issue to his team. Metagross uh, potentially, depending on my set. Uh, if I'm like a scarf set or something, uh, his team has a much harder time dealing with it. So I do predict him here to go out to his cell goal because uh, if I'm also if I'm a sub variant, I uh, I could sub up, take about 25% health with the sub and be in range to die from a life warp modest bug buzz from his cell goal. So uh, knowing that it's very likely he could either switch into a cell goal and potentially bug buzz me the next turn or even go into the registeel, I should go for the leech seed here. And the reason why this seems uh, I guess this could seem silly in hindsight uh, to the people watching because because I am carrying substitute. My best play here, like from some people's perspective, could have been to sub predicting the HP poison, which is very obvious on his Rotom. Uh, that, that is the only way he can effectively hit uh, my Whimsicott for any decent amount of damage. And um, obviously, I did think about this for a long time, but I also know that Maddie is fully aware that I'm uh, that I know about HP poison. I actually uh, was in my match versus Seb. I had secondary check to Breloom because I figured as though he'd Breloom would run Sludge Bomb for my Whimsicott so I'm fully aware of the, the weakness that Whimsicott has to poison typing and uh, I did predict him to predict me to be aware of that and sub here or maybe double out to something as he switched out to his Registeel or his Asogor so I do go for the Leech Seed here because if I had uh, caught the incoming Registeel with the Leech Seed I would have had uh, far more momentum in my side. I would have been at a higher amount of health with Whimsicott. I would have had the Registeel Leech Seated. I would have then been able to switch out to something like my Nidor King or um, something like my Mew and start setting up. Um, and if I just went for the sub, I would have been in a position where it would have been a lose lose position if he had decided to switch out to something like Exelgor or Registeel. So I do just go for the Leech Seed here as he fires off a uh, uninvested HP poison. It still does a decent amount of damage, but I do hold on thanks to my uh, special defense investment. As I said, I am a mixed defensive uh, Whimsicott. So right here, uh, I do actually just go for the Moonblast. Now, the reason I go for the Moonblast is like his play was to his play could if if he decided to HP poison there, like I could have switched out to something like my Mew or my uh, Nidor King, but Nidor King would have been a pretty awful switch into Rotom. If I switch out to my Mew, uh, that that would make sense. I could potentially uh, boost up on the Rotom. He doesn't know my set yet, but if I was a boosting set, switching in his, his Excel goal was the play here. So I just throw off a Moonblast, predicting him to make that switch out to Excel goal. Uh, maybe predicting my Energy Ball as well from the uh, Whimsicott. So we do catch the Excel goal here, and we do a decent amount of damage, 45, along with the Poison damage that's going to put him down to a, a pretty nice uh, under 50% uh, amount of health. And I can just go out to my Metagross here comfortably and tank a Bug Buzz from the incoming Excel goal. Now, that damage reveals that he is uh, max special attack. And uh, this is pretty good. This is pretty good. It means he's not a f likely not a final gambit set. 
and even if he is, he's at a low enough amount of health where our Metagross won't die to a final Gambit. I can now set up my rocks as he just decides to stay in here and sack off his Selgor. Which is fine with me because this thing was a big threat to Weavile as well as my Mew, so I'm, I'm pretty happy to see this thing die. Uh, he's now at range where if he doesn't manage to spin with Donphan, he will die to Stealth Rocks, so I just uh, opt to take him out with the Earthquake here. Uh, I, I contemplated going for the Toxic predicting the Rotom Switch, but it, it wasn't quite worth it, like when this thing could potentially um, take me out next turn with another Bug Pass, he would if I'd over predicted and gone for the Toxic there, so it just wasn't worth it. So I take him out with the Earthquake there, as that's one big threat down, and uh, you know, we're, we're not looking too bad at this point. Uh, he brings in Rotom, and he can't, uh, he can kill me with a Hydro, um, but he doesn't want to miss, he doesn't want to, you know, risk me going into something like Mew, uh, and he, you know, he may miss Hydro, and if I am Toxic, I do get a Toxic off on this Rotom. Now, I go for the Gravity here, as he goes for the Willow, uh, so he pretty did my switch out. Also, Whimsicott lives in a Hydro Pump that energy health, so uh, that was pretty wise on his part. He would have calced my spread and known that I didn't go down to a Hydro, so, uh, Actually, after rocks, I would have gone down to a hydro pump, um, but he opts to just go for the safe willow there because that would have that would have burnt my mew as well, which would have been a pretty safe switch into the rotom and effectively muted mew a lot less uh, bulky for the rest of the match. So I do agree with the willow play there, but I just opt to set uh, set up my gravity here. Now setting up gravity means that uh, Nidoking King has a pretty free reign to come in and click Earth Power because nothing can uh, nothing can take it on. But he switches out to his Don Fan here. He makes a great play and switches out to his Don Fan. Now, the reason this was a, a really solid play is I am not going to go down to burn next turn due to my leftovers. So, a Metagross is going to stay in here. And I do outspeed this Don Fan naturally. So, I'm not going to be able to go for a slow Stealth Rock on his Rapid Spin. As he just now uh, Rapid Spins as Metagross will go down to burn this next turn. So, Don Fan's at a range of health where it can die. It's going to die to anything from the rest of my team. But I don't have my hazards up. And uh, this was, this was uh, you know, this was something that. I really did, I, I couldn't go into Nidoking and set up a Toxic Spice again because he could just stay in and Rapid Spin, dying to poison the next turn, uh, letting his Inferno come in or his Taurus come in for free and get a massive hit off on my team. So my play here was to go into my Mew. Uh, if I had gone into any other Mon, he could have capitalized on that next turn and gone into something like Inferno and potentially set up and I couldn't risk that. So Mew was my, my best play uh, right here as I just go for the Flamethrower in case he did want to somehow preserve this and go out into his Registeel. Uh, so he doesn't have any information on my Mew other than the fact that it is like potentially a special attacking variant with lefties. He doesn't know anything about my spread because the flamethrower killed from that range regardless of any investment or not. So he brings in his Rotom here and uh, I could potentially set up on this Rotom. If I get to a, if I, uh, if I can set up enough, I don't have to fear, like if I can get to at least plus one, I don't have to fear a fire blasting special attacking Infernape you know, potentially taking me out because I will be able to tank those hits pretty pretty safely. Uh, so I just go for the Carmine here as he goes for a Willow and he's actually faster than my Mew. So he's speed creeping my Mew. So he's a, he's a faster road and potentially faster than my Nita King, which is definitely something I have to keep in mind. Um, now, I go for the Psychic here and the reason I do this is if he wanted to switch out to his Taurus, uh, predicting me to boost up once more, I could uh, get a massive hit off on the Taurus and allowing me to just set up with Rotom is, is not, not the best play in my opinion because I could just continue to boost up and then roost up and kill him uh, you know, in later turns with a Psychic. Uh, but he just opts to Hydro me here, which is a very interesting play. Um, you know, I don't, I'm not going to question Matty because Matty has reasons for making the plays he does. Perhaps he was just trying to sack off Rotom here, but had I continued boosting up uh, you know, without attempting to take him out here, then I could have been a real... I could have just won here with Mew, uh, as you, you guys will see. Uh, Mew is physically defensive, so it can take on the Taurus quite quite well. Uh, if I boost up enough, high enough, I can Oko the Taurus uh, whilst losing any hit from it at, at a high enough range of health. So I just go for the Psychic here, taking out the Rotom, and um, Mew's pretty weakened, as you guys can see. Mew's at 70, he's at 59 after the burn, so this is it's not looking too good, as in comes the Taurus. Now, I figured as though he'd likely be a Life Orb variant of Taurus, as I do have uh, Metagross on my team, which can tank our Rock Climbs, if he's like a choice lock variant. So I decide to roost up here just to scout the damage on his Taurus, just to scout his damage output and determine what item and nature he's running. And his investment, he goes for the rock climb, that's 51%. Now, that's banded. That's banded sheer force Taurus. And uh, 
This is not looking good. I actually, that's actually a roll to take me out here. I'm not going to risk such a valuable mon on my team dying to a, a potential roll. And, you know, risking up with a burn on this Taurus is just risking getting taken out by um, the the burn damage. I will go down to burn next turn, even if uh, it gets like a low roll and then I roost up, I, I roost up, I will die to, I will die to burn eventually. So I'm not going to risk my Mew here. I'm just going to switch right out. I go into my uh, Whimsicott just as a sack because it's not really doing much to register. It's not doing anything to Infernape, uh, barring Encore locking it into a setup move of choice. Um, but now I can go into my Weavile. Uh, knockoff, knockoff is very important here because he's likely to switch out to his register. But even if he does, I knock off a potential Sugar Berry, meaning that Nidoking King can take it on at a later point in the match without fearing him living with his Sugar Berry and killing me with an earthquake on his side. Uh, had I had I earth, uh, I did did really consider pursuiting here. I, I really thought about it long and hard because if I pursued Taurus, I put him in range to die from Psychic from you. Um, but it really wasn't worth it wasn't worth it in my opinion because if he stayed in and I just pursued it I'd only get like 30 or 40 percent damage off and I'd essentially lose lose the game so I can't risk that I do have to go for the knockoff here as he makes the plane switches out to his register recognizing the importance of his Taurus uh, it's very important this match uh, it's the only thing that can really effectively break down I don't know his inferno set yet but his Taurus is a pretty surefire way of breaking down my team Barring a potential Skullburn, if I actually had it, which I don't on my Alan Mola, Taurus just wins at this point because it does outspeed everything on my team. I've shown Toxic Spikes, I've shown that I'm not Choice Locked on my Nidoking, King, so he doesn't have to worry about that. Anyway, so he goes out to his Registeel and takes takes a decent amount from the knockoff. As now, this is where this is where I really have to uh, really have to get uh, put myself back in the game because at this point it's not looking too good for my team, and I, I realized at this point. I need to start. I need to start putting myself back in this match if I want. Uh, if I want to be able to take on this Taurus now, I go into my Al Alamomola here, and uh, this is where I. <laughs> this is a pretty interesting uh, series of events, as you'll see. Uh, the register just goes to the rock slide on my Weaver, which is a good play on Maddie's part. Not wanting to. He obviously doesn't have Iron Head, so the rock slide would would have also been a pretty nice bring for my Mega Pincer. Now, right here. I brought Healing Wish last week against Jolt, and Maddie's fully aware of the fact that I do like to run Wish on my Alan Mola, obviously. The fact that I haven't taken any damage from especially attacking Mon on his team, he cannot determine yet if I am AV or not. And the fact that I did bring this Alan Mola in on my on the Registeel uh, does give the kind of does give the, the sign that I am potentially a healing wish variant or a wish variant. And if I were to uh, healing wish or even wish into my Mew here and start setting up on the Registeel, I would uh, I could potentially win at this point. So I know Maddie's not going to risk this. He's not going to risk uh, Registeel being set up for fodder for a potentially healed up Mew. And he obviously doesn't have status on this as he would have gone for it earlier on in the match versus my team. So uh, I don't know that for sure, but I'm assuming he doesn't because I did have Mons in on this Registeel earlier and he could have gone for status if he wanted to, but he didn't. Um, so Mew is a pretty pretty safe uh, heal up and uh, boost up on this Registeel. So I go for the knockoff here. <laughs> I go for the burnt knockoff versus a knocked off, a no item Registeel, predicting him to switch out to his Tauros. And as you guys can see, he switches out to his Tauros. So immediately we are back in this and um, with that play we shift the momentum right back in our favor as now this Taurus is uh, in range, uh, it's not in range, sorry, it's severely weakened, it's its offensive uh, capabilities have been weakened now, uh, getting that 50% uh, power boost off with it, knocking off his choice band is going to be huge for my Mew, as uh, he goes to the rock climb here, and I just go for ice beam, uh, just to get damage, it is my most, I wasn't going for the freeze there, it is the most uh, damaging move I had to hit, this Taurus with waterfall did like half of that damage to Taurus, and uh, if I can, if I can put him in range to die from pursuit, from my Weavile, I will, because if I can bring my Weavile in now, uh, and potentially, if I got a little bit of a high roll with that Ice Beam, he was in range to die from a band of Pursuit if he did switch out, and switching out would be his best play, just sacking off like the Registeel, potentially going out to his Inferno, but I don't actually get a high enough roll uh, there, which is a bit unfortunate, but, you know, that's completely fine. Um, I was playing with that roll, because if I got it, I wouldn't have to risk my Mew here, but uh, he can just uh, take me out this turn with an Earthquake, just killing off my Alan Mola. As now I just go into Mew. Like I said, if I got a little bit of, a little bit more damage off on that uh, Taurus, I would have been able to get in with the pursuit. Uh, but that is not the case. As we just bring in Mew, and um, as you guys can see, the rock climb into the 28. So that is that is a huge damage difference. Now that we knocked off his choice band, 
I can now roost up on this uh, Taurus as he just goes for the rock climb. Uh, he's trying to whittle me down. Potentially, you know, if he crits me here, then uh, that could deal huge damage. He could potentially two shot me if he crits me. Uh, so, we, you know, we're just praying not, not to get crit uh, as we can heal up to a decent amount of health and um, start boosting up. I do, as I said earlier, I do want to get to a plus one versus uh, any mon in his team. So I'm not potentially threatened by a Fire Blast Inferno if he's like a Life Orb variant or something of that nature. And uh, we get we get a decent amount of damage off. And this this damage, this is important because now he is taken out by Ice Shard from my Banded Weavile, guaranteed. He can't live that. Uh, the only thing now standing in my way of victory is the Inferno. That is something I, I have to be careful of. And now I'm just going to Roost up. So he now switches out to his Inferno, uh, predicting my Roost, which is a good play on his part. Uh, potentially ballsy, but you know, I wasn't, I wasn't going to lose my Mew there. I was obviously going to heal up. So Maddie makes the good plan, gets that to his Inferno. But this is good. This is fine for me because if I can get a Psychic off on the Inferno, I put it in range. If it doesn't die, to die to a Banded Ice Shard from Weavile. And uh, put myself, position myself in a in a spot to win this match. So I go for the psychic here as he fires off a taunt. Now he, he taunted there, trying to stop me from car minding up. Uh, and this psychic damage reveals that he's most likely an offensive variant uh, because if he had bulk, then I believe that would have done uh, quite a bit less. Um, but he's he's probably a fast taunt uh, inferno for things like my uh, to outspeed the stuff on my team like Mew and to threaten the Weavile. Uh, as he, he just goes for the flamethrower here, uh, you know, whittling down my Mew, uh, but it doesn't do all that much. It, he is in, um, he's in blaze range, so that does, it does more than it usually would, so 43% as you guys can see there. Um, I'm assuming he's a, he's a blaze inferno, that did quite a lot. But I can just take him out here with a psychic, and now we're looking like, uh, you know, Mew's, Mew's done its job, Mew's done exactly what I needed it to do. It took out the Mon that outsped Nidoking King and threatened Weavile offensively. Uh, so now, in comes the Taurus, and the Taurus can potentially take out my Mew if he gets a high enough roll. Actually, no, sorry, he can't. The highest roll was 31%, so he couldn't have taken out my Mew there. Uh, but I was fine, even if he did take out Mew there, I just would have pursued him with Weavile and then one with Nidoking. But uh, he gets he gets the 31% the roll there, and Mew can just take him out with a sidekick from that range of health, and then go down to the burn. And at this point, Nidoking can just come in now, and essentially click Earth Power, and wrap this game up, uh, taking out the the Reg Seal. I knew he wasn't like a Sugarberry variant because I already knocked off his item earlier with the Weavile. So, guys, there we have my match versus Maddie. Amazing match. Um, it wasn't. It wasn't a very like turn for turn. It wasn't. It didn't seem very long, but you know, once we were actually playing it, it was. It was absolutely amazing. Uh, so intense. The most intense game I've ever played in, in league format. And uh, we were both, you know, thinking really long and hard about our plays. And. Yeah, you know, we talked about it after the match. As I said, Manny and I are really close friends, and we're both just happy the match wasn't determined by hacks, you know, or anything like that, because that's never, that's never like a nice way to win or lose, especially versus such a good friend. Um, and yeah, guys, I, I hope you guys enjoyed. This is a nice little prelude to potentially the finals. If Manny and I are to make it to the finals, we both have our playoff spot guaranteed, so we could potentially face in finals if we aren't knocked out. Uh, you know, once the playoffs begin, which would be pretty exciting if we could play each other again. Um, but yeah, guys, that, that that is my week nine match. I hope you all really enjoyed. Now, if if for some reason you're not subscribed to Maddie, if you're not following his channel, you need to go and check him out. This this man is an amazing player, and uh, he's a he's a very he's a great content creator. He makes very funny. He makes a mixture of funny content, very serious, uh, very serious content. And just enjoyable content all around. He's a, he's you know he's very into his fitness. He's a fitness, um, he's a f makes fitness videos as well as Pokemon videos and uh, you know wrestling videos for those interested in wrestling. He's just a he's just a really top guy overall. One of the nicest people you'll ever meet in this community. Um, and you can learn a lot from him. I know I've I've learned a great deal from him when it comes to tournament play. So guys, definitely go and check out Matty. Uh, you you know it's you, you can only gain from watching his his channel and help this man get to a thousand because he's so close he's, he's almost there he's in the 900s and he really does deserve all the support he gets on his channel and all the subs he gets so um with that guys i will leave you uh until my next match i hope you guys enjoyed and um <laughs> i'm pretty i'm pretty pretty proud to say that uh, we're the only undefeated team left in the mpl so hopefully you know we can keep the streak going um <laughs> we will see where you go from here but 
yeah, I, I'm, I'm really proud of uh, both myself and Maddie. Like, Maddie's just proved himself to be such a threat uh, this, this, this season, and I, I don't see anyone else but Maddie making it to the finals, to be honest. I, I don't see how he could not make it to the finals. So, you know, if we are lucky enough to make it to the finals ourselves, we will most likely see a rematch between the two of us. But if not, it was very awesome to face him, nonetheless, in, in the season, in the regular season. So, guys, hope you enjoyed. Drop a like, uh, leave a comment on what you thought of the team. If you're not already subbed to my channel, uh, you know, I, I, I appreciate subs. That, that's all. <laughs> that's very nice of me, seeing you guys like my content. I think we're, we're approaching 100, so that's um, that's pretty exciting. I'll, we do like a, a video, uh, like a face reveal or so, something like that <laughs> when we get to 100. I haven't really... Uh, thought about it too much but anyway guys <laughs> i'm gonna get out of here thanks for watching and i'll, I'll see you guys next time